Manipur lush green and very beautiful a state whose very name translates to mean the jeweled land This is a state of valleys and small hills a state of rich culture and very hardy people It is a state less known and seen even less by people from other states of our country and the world largely due to its law and order problems but there is life beyond insurgency a life beyond the guns where lotuses bloom and nature's bounty can be witnessed a place of the famed siroi lily and loktak lake a place where people sing dance and enjoy during the many festivals This is a state where the robust game of polo was born. Here it is called Sagol Kangjai. This is a land of rich handicrafts and sonorous culture. A land whose every inch is worth exploring. This beautiful land is inhabited by equally interesting people. The Maithis, who are in majority here, are a people of rich heritage, history and culture. Instances of the people fighting the British and even the women joining in are evident from the many historical places here. The Nupi Lal statues built in the heart of the capital city Imphal show how women resisted the British. The Shaheed Minar upholds the tribal martyrs who fought the British. The two memorials at Imphal Dimapur Highway and Imphal Ukrul Road highlight how our Manipuris fought even during the Second World War. Then there is the world famous Kangla Fort which was the seat of the Manipuri kings starting from the mythical god king 
Nongda Lairen Pakhanba in 33 AD. Inside the Kangla complex stand the old palace and fortress, a reminder of Manipur's glorious days of the past. The Kangla sees many locals offering prayers to their ancient kings and forefathers. Guru, go gam so ngila. I look nu, nu nu gam so. Ama, bam bam le so. I yung pung dia lap sa ne katino. Ama, bam lu gam you lap no, no gam so le ami. Further off, one can see the famous INA memorial at Moirang, the first place in India where Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose hoisted the flag of the Indian National Army. Many other monuments speak volumes about the bravery of the Maithis of Manipur. If the state's history is rich, the culture is equally vibrant. Even their dhol beating, or dhol cholom as it is called, is an art which is perfected after years of practice and is a pleasure to watch. Also, a real treat to the eyes are their famous Ras Leela performances. homage to Lord Krishna, whose leelas or sports with the gopis or the milkmaids of Brindavan are legendary in the Indian mythological tales, the Ras Leela of Manipur is different from those of other parts of our country. Dressed in traditional poloi, the women dance with amazing femininity and grace. Dancer impersonating Krishna wears a regal kajingle on his head. Similar kinds of regal dresses and ornaments are also worn during the state's most famous boat race competition called Hiang Tanaba. This competition is especially held during the state's September festival Haikru Hitongba, which is a very joyous festival revolving around the famous Sri Gobindaji temple. Right from the morning, one can see ladies decked in traditional wear preparing the items for worship and celebration. 
Many rituals follow before the idol of Govindaji, who is considered another form of Vishnu, the preserver, according to Hindu mythologies, is carried to the racing site, which is a 16 meter long narrow canal along the temple. The participants take the blessings of the Lord before starting the race. The festival of Haikru Hidongba is the is is performed. Uh, at the moat of Sri Sri Bijoy Govinda, which is popularly known as Sagolban Bijoy Govinda Thangapat, since the past uh, 230 30 years, uh, it has a, a deep religious and historic story behind it. Uh, Sri Sri Bijoy Govinda. Uh, after the Jivanaya ceremony in 1776, which was performed along with the Jivanaya ceremony of Sri Govinda Ji at the Langtabal, at the Den Palace at Langtabal, it was it was offered by Rajasri Bhagachandra Maharaj uh, to his uncle Maidingu Nongpok Lady Khomba, who was popularly known as Ananta Sai, to take care of the daily service, daily temple service at his uh, location, uh, which, is, which is the present premises where Sri Sri Vijay Govinda is being worshipped and which has come to be known as Sagulban Vijay Govinda. That was in 1779 when it was moved from uh, the palace at Langtabal uh, to these premises and it was on the occasion of the movement of the uh, idol of Sri Sri Bijoy Govinda, that Haikru Hidongba was uh, celebrated uh, when, uh, when this ceremony was observed and it has been observed uh, without a break since 1779. Another colourful Methai celebration is their famous Lai Harawa festival, which is essentially a spring festival when the entire community prays to the forest gods who are collectively called Umang Lai. In this festival, colourful processions come out in the streets. Young and old, rich and poor, all dance and sing and pay their respects to their gods, praying for a prosperous year. The Lai Haroba dances are stylized and ritualistic and the dancers are required to wear traditional clothes. Goddess Panthoebi is another goddess whom the Manipuris have immense trust in. Considered to be an embodiment of female Shakti, Panthoebi and her mate Nongpok Ningtu are taken out in huge processions just before the entire country celebrates Durga Puja. Another festival which sees the entire Methai community singing and dancing on the streets in long processions is the 10 day long Rathayatra. In fact, the Rathayatra celebrated in Manipur is on such a large scale and so joyous 
that it can rival Urissa, the state in which Jagannath Rath Yatra is perhaps one of the three biggest festivals. In Manipur too, devotees eagerly pull the carriage of Lord Jagannath, which is called Kang in Manipuri. In fact, Kang is also the name of a very popular indigenous indoor game of Manipur. Played extensively between March and July, the traditional game of Kang sees the players pushing a special seed of a creeper called Kang Hill across smooth surfaces. Apart from the big festivals, the Manipuris celebrate the Chairaoba or the Manipuri New Year in April with much festivity and prayers, mainly to Goddess Stanamahi. As a part of the ritual, people climb on their nearest hilltops with the belief that this would enable them to achieve great heights in their worldly lives. The Methis and Pangals, or Manipuri Muslims, both observe this tradition. The Manipuris also have several domestic celebrations. Their famous Ningol Chak Kauba is one such celebration wherein the males of every household arrange feasts for their daughters and sisters. Apart from festivals, elaborate and unique rituals can be witnessed during the birth of a child. Wherein priests are called to chant special mantras with occasion specific ingredients of worship, food and offerings to both men and gods. Marriage is another happy occasion which calls for much festivity. In Manipuri Metai marriages, the brides wear the traditional poloi and many ornaments, while the bridegrooms wear white dhoti kurta with a kayat on their head. Sankirtanas are an essential part of Metai marriages and here one can see many of Manipur's traditional musical instruments. Culture in Manipur is not restricted to festivals or singing and dancing alone. The Manipuri style of martial arts called Thangta is another unique aspect of life here. Performed with full specific traditional dress, Thangta, which literally means the art of warfare, has two versions, 
with arms and without arms. The real martial arts form is known as Huyen Lalong, the art of warfare. But nowadays it is popularly known as Tang Ta in the whole world. Tang, use of Tang swords, and the Ta spear, and the Lati or Tse. Then we, have, we train also in mar, unarmed combat, martial, uh, sarisat, known as Sarisat. And Mukna, Manipuri type of wrestling, etc. Another unique aspect of Manipuri Metai life is their Shumang Lila, meaning courtyard theatre. Shumang Lila are plays which are performed on any open stage. Both male and female performers can play each other's roles. So, Shumang Lila performers are specially trained to enact both male and female characters flawlessly. This ensures that the show goes on with whichever artist is available at the moment. The Shumang Lila plays generally take up social causes as their subjects and openly criticize even the highest people of the land. The plays include many songs and dances and draw huge crowds. Theater movement in Manipur has been always very, very active. I mean, uh, that is a known fact. And the old uh, young directors and the playwrights are now uh, showing their performances in the national festivals and many of the regional festivals and they are coming up quite strong. And I should say that in spite of the economical factors that we face here due to the political situation and so on, but, uh, but theatre activities here is so good. And, that we, and also the thematic content as well as, you know, the, uh, many of the playwrights are trying very hard to focus on what is happening with our life, uh, and socio-economical, political um, factors of our life and so on. The Methis have many more wonderful qualities. Of them, the art of making pottery without the use of the potter's wheel special dolls and the beautiful handloom items need special mention. These can be found in their unique Andro Museum some 45 kilometers away from Imphal. In fact, the Andro Museum can be called a mini Manipur with houses of each community of the state having been built here. Traditional pottery and items of everyday use of each community too are preserved here. Also present in this same complex is a doll museum wherein all the dolls wear the dresses of various tribes of Manipur. Another place worth visiting is the Khwairam Band Bazaar or Ima Market which translates to mean the Market of Mothers. 
This is a market exclusively run by women who sell everything from handloom items to fish. Over 3,000 women sell their wares from here. Much of the fish that is sold here can be traced back to the famous Loktak Lake which sustains thousands of fishermen families. These fishermen live on small islands formed by dense reeds of the lake. The main islets here are Thanga, Karang, Sendra and Ithing, all situated within the lake. Compared to the refined festivals and dances of the Maithis, the Tangkul Nagas, who constitute the majority people living in the hilly areas of Manipur, extending from Ukrul to Nagaland, live a more robust life. The area which these people inhabit is hilly and thus the people who are mainly agriculturists have to opt for terrace cultivation. The Tankul Nagas are an industrious tribe. Even in the hilly, uneven land, they grow everything from paddy to pineapple and ginger on the slopes. In fact, even seed sowing is a matter of great joy, and entire families, including women and little children, participate in the process. Men and women both work in the fields and are involved in all subsequent tasks before eating, which includes grinding of paddy drying it fetching water from near and far and finally cooking. Apart from farm and forest products, the Tankuls are very fond of meat and eat meat from a wide range of animals, birds and water creatures. These meat producing animals are generally fetched by the menfolk by hunting. The Thankuls are famous for their hunting skills. They go in groups with spears in hands and war cries on their lips. Even children are taken on hunting trips so that they too can learn the correct methods of hunting. Even now, the Thankuls bring back many spoils from the jungles. Similarly, a good harvest too makes them happy and they break into dances to propitiate their forest and harvest gods. Dressed in colorful shawls, lungis and with plenty of ornaments including interesting headgear, armbands, leg bands, belts necklaces and earpieces and armed with spears and dhaus in their hands, the Tankul Nagas dance with gay abandon. Such is their pride and respect for their traditional songs and dances 
that the younger generation, though educated, does not hesitate to wear their traditional dresses and join the festivities whenever there is a good harvest. Dresses made of animal and snake skins and heads of small animals are prized possessions and these two are displayed by the best dancers of this clan. The daily life dress of the Tankuls is a little different from their dance dress. This is the dress of the Tankul male. He is wearing a headgear called Mayung Pashi, a necklace called Charei, a wraparound called Kahamalu, bangle called Zaurei, and holds a spear called Gajai. The dress of the Tankul female is equally ornate. They wear a chain on their heads which is called Kongshang, a black wrapping on their chests called Mukha and a red wrapping on their waist called Fangyai Kashan. The best place to meet the Tankuls is the Hungpung village which is their biggest village inhabited by over 8,500 Tankul Nagas. Here, right at the entrance, one gets to see these over 200-year-old trees. Named Tarung, the trees symbolize the richness and honor of the Tankuls. A little further inside, one sees stones with footprints of the Manipur Maharaja. These stones are a proof of the close affinity that existed since time immemorial between the Manipur Maithis and the Tankuls. In fact, according to the Manipuri mythologies, the Tankuls were considered the elder brothers of the Maithis, a belief that is reiterated at many social festivals like the Mira Huchungba. There are many stories and songs of these facts. The unity and relationship of brothers should be preserved and maintained at any cost. <laughs> The lifestyles of the Tankuls, however, are very different from the Maithis. Starting with their houses to their personal appearances, their hairstyles, language and songs, everything about the Tankuls is different from the Maithis. This is Mr. Y.L. Yaseng, who is singing a traditional song. Like him, others too sing while working. 
Apart from the cane crafts, the Tankuls are famous for their black pottery, which is unique to their community. This is Mr. Somi Shimre, a famous black pottery maker. Mr. Shimre makes his pottery with the powder of a special kind of black stone which is indigenously available. The Tankuls make innumerable items in the black pottery range. The women folk of this tribe are adept at weaving. Every house has a loom and almost every woman weaves. The Tankuls follow Christianity. However, going to churches and celebrating Christian festivals and practices have not made them give up their old pre-Christian faith totally. For instance, the Paka Fire Puja is till date widely performed for the peace and welfare of the villages. Another traditional ritual is the Lead Festival which sees much dancing. This is the traditional Faijak dance which is performed specially during the Lead Festival. Likewise, marriages too often offer a glimpse of the traditional Tankul way of life. Although many people prefer church marriages, the traditional rituals are also followed. These include the initial partner choosing ritual which takes place during the Lakhang Nui festival which sees young marriageable women coming in full traditional attire and dancing. They are guarded by elderly family members. The young marriageable boys come and select their desired partners here. Next, the prospective groom's father and relatives go with the proposal of marriage to the selected girl's house. Here, after initial talks, a chicken is killed by pulling its neck.
According to Tankul beliefs, if the chicken lifts its right leg before dying, the marriage should be finalized and it would be successful. If the left leg is raised by the chicken, the marriage is called off. After a marriage is fixed, it is the turn of the bride and her family to go to the groom's house for the marriage. Much feasting follows the ritual. The Tankuls are a happy race. Here in the lanes of Hong Pung, one can witness men and women, young and old, indulging in a variety of sports. This tug of war is called Thing Nair Kangakun. The wrestling by children is Kangatuk. While the game is Sekuika Pung. Such simple games are enjoyed by the other communities of Manipur as well. This is the Pomai version of the tug of war called Aro Ahine. Also popular among the same Pomai community are the women's game Zaolo. and the all-men game Chotradi. Being far away from big cities and often living without electricity for days, these simple activities give much pleasure to these people. The Tankuls are more or less self-sufficient with their local markets providing for most of their needs. Even disputes are settled in village councils without going to courts. Here we chanced upon a land encroachment dispute which was brought before the Hanga, which is a local name for a village council. The village councils are headed by the village headman, but decisions are taken jointly with consultation among the members.
Here, one party was not happy with the decision. But ultimately, they agreed to heed the council's decision, and so the dispute ended, with all having rice beer together. Like the Thangkuls, many other tribes of Manipur depend upon their village councils for settling disputes among other things. This is a village council meeting of the Pomai tribe living in the Liai village in the faraway Senapati district of Manipur. The dispute here is between two parties, one of whom had stopped the flow of irrigation water into the field of the other. This had led to blows and might have turned more serious if people of the community had not intervened and called the village council. The disputants were here asked to pay a court fee as well as a fine for fighting. The council ruled that water was to be shared by both the parties and thus the person who had stopped the water flow was forced to open the embankment he had tried to make. In this way, justice was quickly given on the spot. The Pomais, who are a minority tribe of Manipur, have many other interesting facets. For instance, this is their tiger pond, which is used by the people of Lukrena Kel locality. The water is supposed to be sacred with abilities to cure diseases. Likewise, there is the elephant pond and several other ponds named after animals with individualistic properties. With the presence of these ponds as well as the Borak River which originates from one of the hills in the Poma area. The Pomais, like most other hill people, do not face severe water problems. Like the Tankuls, the Pomais too have to follow terraced cultivation as their land is also hilly. 
Again, like the Thangkols, they too continue following many of their old customs and rituals despite having converted to Christianity decades back. This, for instance, is the Jasudi Puja of the Pomai Naga community of Manipur, a puja which has the power to beget strength in devotees, so much so that they can brave the scorching sun and the incessant rain without any difficulty. The Jasudi Puja is performed by couples who can offer several bottles of wine and over 70 to 80 animals to God. The meat of these sacrificed animals is later fed to the entire village free of cost. Another interesting ritual is the marriage ceremony of the Pomais. Here a girl goes to the prospective groom's house accompanied by her grandmother and gifts an axe to the prospective groom. If the groom accepts the axe, the marriage is considered finalized. The boy's parents treat one and all with wine and give rice as a token of gratitude to the grandmother. Later, a few rituals follow, after which the girl's parents too bless the girl and allow her to go and stay in her new home. The traditional marriage system that is performed by the non-Christian is that the, the girl is taken by an old woman from her house and then it is brought to the male house where the eggs is being laid in front of the house and then the female, the female that is the girl who is going to get married with the boy, she has to stand on the feet to, sh to show that the, the girl has become a responsible person to the man. And then thereafter, after they came to the house, to the male house, they are being blessed by the parents of the male father and mother. And that is how this traditional way of system is practiced within the Pomai community and some other Naga community too. Marriage and other happy occasions lead to singing and dancing. This folk song is called Angalu. In this song, the younger group symbolizes the modern generation, while the older group stands for the older generation and the traditional ways of life. True to this song, many developments can be seen among the modern generation of the Pomais. <laughs> Many youngsters have gone out of the state to metropolitan cities and have consequently adapted many new changes in their lives. But although the ubiquitous pant shirt has made its appearance, many still prefer their traditional dresses, particularly the women, who can mostly be found dressed in their sapu or wrap around for their upper torso, 
and bijaman or wrap around for the lower torso apart from these the women also wear nobho their beautiful earrings and nautomatu or necklace the dress of the men is equally colorful they wear a bird feather in their ears called mazimai the many colored chest cover is faus and the white waist belt is laumabhe while the wrap around on their lower torso is tauchiman legs too are decorated with rings called fik the best occasions to see the complete dress are during dances this particular dance is called zaimai popado It is performed to tell the tale of how the Pomai people living in Liai today migrated from another hill called Saranamai some 500 odd years ago. Folklore goes that the first two people who migrated built these two houses in Liai. The one with the wooden cross is considered the male house. It is called Chikai. The second house is said to have been built for the younger of the two brothers. It is considered as the female house. The houses of other tribes of Manipur look distinctly different. This is a Maram house. A small community with approximately 11,000 people living in the Tadubi and Kangpokpi areas of Senapati district, the Marams too are a colorful race with their many animistic faiths and customs. Apart from these four tribes, Manipur has over 19 other small tribes, each contributing to the colorful mosaic of the state today although their capital city imphal has become much modernized the smaller towns villages and hamlets still maintain their traditional values and ways of life even among the younger generation many of whom have at some point or the other gone out of the state to work and study do not hesitate to don their traditional clothes and break into clan specific songs and dances whenever the occasion arises this is laudable especially because manipur is a state with a very rich and unique culture these must be propagated and highlighted and who better can carry the culture and traditions forward but our youth